to episode number two of the Time Out with Tyshawn podcast, hosted by Rock, which is me. That's Tyshawn. Make sure you follow us, subscribe, like on all our social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, our YouTube channel. Tyshawn, how you feeling? What's good, man? I'm feeling good. How you doing? I'm good, man. On So on episode number one, we kind of touched on your background a little, went through your past. Catch us up on the present, man. What are you up to now? Um, Well, we talked about it uh a little bit in the first episode as well. Um, just doing some training uh, with the youth, doing a bunch of clinics and camps and stuff like that. Uh, I've been doing a bunch of traveling and doing some stuff back in New Jersey as well. So hopefully just keep building on that. Um, also took a job at uh, Lawrence Free State right here down the street um, to do some coaching, probably with the JV team as a, as a head coach maybe and uh, help Sharon with the varsity as a, as a uh, assistant. Um, so I'll get to be around those boys. Um, and hopefully, you know, bring some new energy to the basketball scene here. We'll get into that a little bit. How's the transition going? This is first year, second year of not playing at a high, very high level of basketball. Yeah, I would say it was my second complete year. Um, first year since I officially like retired from basketball and haven't even thought about going overseas again or like actually joining the team. Um Part of uh, I watch you play in the round ball classic and a couple pickup games, man. You still got a little bit of game left. It ain't ever crossed your mind one morning you wake up and be like, "Yeah, I, I still." No, got that's it. when I. That's when I decide. That's when I could. It's confirmed that I don't need to do it with my body. I wake up and every bone is cracking <laughs> and shit like that. That's when it's confirmed, like you made the right decision. Um, but no. With that being said, I do still love to play. I still play pickup. I still play in little summer tournaments and things like that. Um, but just the commitment of having a you know, a season, um, you know, practices and traveling. And then I'm doing it from overseas. I'm not in the NBA anymore. So I, my last six or seven years were overseas. Um, and so that alone takes a toll on you without having to be focused and locked in on basketball for six or seven months. Um, so, um, yeah, the transition, um, it started off pretty, you know, kind of rough uh, just because I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know what I would do without playing basketball. And that same schedule that I'm talking about was tough. I'm used to being on it. Regardless if it's tough, I'm used to going through it and having the practices and being with the team and traveling. Um, and so, yeah, not being on that schedule, I had a lot of idle time to just kind of sit around and be like, what the hell are you going to do? What's What do you like to do? What's, what's next? And with that being said, I landed in the gym, obviously, right? Like I landed in the gym because what else would I be doing? So I started to go back and work out and shoot around and, <laughs> that led to me helping the kid and then led to me helping my son and then led to me coaching my son's team, which led to all the youth stuff that I'm doing now. So um, definitely feel like it's my calling to be around a game. Which is a great segue for the plug I'm about to give you. What a nice shirt this guy's Taylor wearing. Mayhew. And just for the record, he was wearing his own shirt for episode number one. This is not <laughs> his shirt. Switch. This is my this is my own shirt. Get your so, merch at TyshawnTaylor.com, which we're going to work on. So... Give you a quick plug if you're listening anywhere in the Kansas City, Topeka, Lawrence, KC Metro, um, and you want to get better at basketball, whether it be for you for pickup games or summer league, or uh, more importantly, if your kids want to get to know basketball a little bit better and get better, I know firsthand by bringing my two kids to work with them. Uh, they've been working with them for about four months now. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you it's night and day from when we walked into the gym the first time and one of the most important things I notice is their confidence level has gotten so much uh, better at the game of basketball because they feel like they're well <laughs> equipped now. They feel they can listen to me so much, only so much before they just roll their eyes. And but then when they come in here and listen to Tyshawn, who's obviously done it at the highest level possible, it means a little bit more. It's more impactful. So now when they get home they're more dedicated to playing the game. They want to get better. So I've noticed that. And uh, Chamberlain's so excited for basketball this year to get here because uh, we started working with you at the end, the and very end season. of basketball yeah. season. So he's had a whole summer and a little bit this fall to work with you. So he's super excited to kind of get out there and show, you know, his middle school, what he's learned yeah, from, for sure. from working with you. So hit him up on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, lessons are really reasonable and they are well worth your time. And, uh, 
And then also a little plug to my boys out at Johnny's. They didn't give me anything for this, but I like those guys out at Johnny's. So <laughs> we, love, we love a good Johnny's. Yeah, you got to hit up Johnny's if you're love a good there. Johnny's. <laughs> Do I get paid for that plug from Taylor May Hoops? Yeah, uh, send me an invoice, yeah, invoice or I'll send you an invoice. I don't know how that works yet. <sighs> Still working on the details, but I do appreciate you saying that. And that is the type of feedback that I enjoy getting from parents um, and from, from kids. It's definitely um, them feeling more confident about their game, um, but also just them like like my passion kind of oozing out in my training and them picking it up. So them wanting to do it even when they're not with me. Um, I love to hear that because um, I had some kids coming here that just learning how to play basketball at 12, 13, 14 years old. Um, but I've been hearing that that's all they want to do now. And so I love the fact that uh, something that I'm passionate about, I can express to someone and they can see that and feel that and kind of take it in, 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 and I will say gain once, some of it Once themselves. he can start beating me one-on-one, we're done coming to you. Just yeah, well, that's not going to take very long. <laughs> if you get a little bit taller, hey, either, you're going to be hey, you. Either that or I'll come to you for some lessons oh, yeah. so I can go home and I think him. that's what's going to have to happen. So it's official. You're going to be on the bench in some coaching capacity with your boy Sharon up at Lawrence Free State. Oh, yeah. What's your coaching style going to be like, man? Have Running thought, gun. We get up. About that? Yeah, come on, man. You know what type of play I was. We getting up and down, help to skelter. Well, what? I meant more as like a, a, your coaching style is like, are you going to be the – Take your tie and coat off, slam it on the floor, throw your chair across the floor. Or are you going to be more of the? I love every single coach that I've ever played for, like on a personal level, but I am not going to be that way. And I love Coach Self. I love Coach Hurley, but they, they were break backboard, break the clipboard over the knee. And that's where I was going with this, you know, as, we, as I was prepping for the interview today or the show today, I started thinking about it. And you look at the coaches that you've played for over your career. Yeah. I mean, it's a who's who of coaches. You got Bob Hurley Sr. Mm-hmm. Goat. You got Coach Self. Goat. You got Jason Kidd. Goat. You got PJ Carlissimo, right? Did you play for PJ? I did play, I did play with PJ. And I would, and you know what's crazy is because as much as I didn't like his style of play, he's a great coach. He's a great coach, well respected. Um Avery Johnson. Great coach. Did I miss anybody? Nope. Those are all my professional coaches I mean, from high school, college, a, and my professional. That's a crazy list. Larry Brown. Larry Brown. You play for LB? I played for LB in Italy when he got his first coaching job as a, a, a I was overseas. I ten job. when Larry Brown won the national championship here in Florence. So LB has got a special a place. LB has X's and O's. He's got a special and, place. And what I would heart. say about every single one of those guys is, besides Jason Kidd, because I feel like he's more of he's when I said goat behind his name is more as a player, player, right? As a coach, he's so good though because he was such a good like all good players don't make good coaches. But his basketball mind and his basketball brain allows him to be successful. He understands the game at a whole different level and sees plays before they happen. And, I mean, as a player, you could see him do that. But as a coach, if he's able to get that out of six or seven other guys, it's, it's crazy. And that's what all of those coaches are able to do. They're able to see the game differently but get other people to see it the way they see it and play that way. And so, I, I mean, I definitely want to do that. And I, all of those guys have their own style. Like Jason Kidd didn't say much. First year coach, after being a player, he's coaching guys that he's played with. He couldn't yell and scream and shit like that. So he would sit back, he talked to you, pull you to the side, he watched tape with you and break down the shit that he's seeing that he wants you to see. And I feel like I would want to be more of that coach. Like I would want my players to feel like they could come to me and talk to me about everything, even things outside of basketball. But when it comes to basketball, I don't want to, I want, I want to teach. Right? I want to help them get better. And so I don't think – I think it's ways – like I think being hard and screaming and doing all of that is more like like setting a tone in your life, right, Like which I want to do that. Like I want to be a father figure type, but I also want them to be successful basketball players. Like I'm a basketball coach first, and I think that's what I'm going to focus on is getting them mentally prepared for what's going to happen on the basketball court. Um, and because of all of those coaches that you name, I think I'm well equipped to do so. Are you worried about kind of the culture we live in now with youth sports and kids? And I mean, I'm a little bit old school, so I don't want to say soft, but you know, are we going to, you're going to get into your coaching career and then uh, a, a month later, we're going to see a headline at the LJ world. Tyshawn Taylor gets fired for too many technical th- fouls or something. Or cussing like- out a, a kid or. Snatching them up or something. And then next thing you know, we're gonna have protesters out here protesting no, the podcast no. because something you said. In no, the that's huddle. a great. That's probably the best question that you've asked in, in the two episodes that we've had so far. 
And I say that because I've had this conversation and I've stood away from wanting to coach and got into training first because, again, like I just talked about, I want to teach the game. I want to teach the skills. I want a kid to leave me and feel how Chamberlain feels, have more confidence, feel better about the game, want to go back to their teams and be the best player. That's the, that's what I wanted to do. The coaching thing just kind of fell in my lap because Sharon was doing it. And so he kind of called me and we talked about doing it together. Um, and so part of why I stood away from even wanting to do it was because of what you're talking about right now. Just still being active and as a player myself, it's going to be hard for me to listen to a 14-year-old kid tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about right. or to try to do it his way opposed to the way I'm trying to get him to do it. That's going to be tough for me. And so um, I'm looking forward to those moments because I think it's going to teach me a lot about myself. It's going to teach me a lot about how to deal with my my son who's coming up at this age and loving the game and how how to like coach him and talk to him um but yeah i am i am nervous about that because i i, I do know this is a different generation of 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 athletes right it's a, I, I i'm not going to say softer because i i feel like i came up in it a little bit as well but it's more of a a glamorized right. way of doing things right. so it's 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 more highlights and more like, I'm going to do this because it looks good opposed to doing it the right way over and over and over until it's, till you know you're going to do it right. Like, I don't care if it looks good, it's going to work. That's the thing that I'm more more on. I know guys just want to come out and make sure that they, they get enough points or enough highlights in a game so that they can go make a three-minute video for their right. Instagram. Make sure their shoes look good. Yeah, you know, so like, I, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm all for that because I'm not like so far removed from the game that I don't feel that. But when it comes to winning, there's nothing more important. Whether you are the person that's scoring the points or looking the best or whatever, um, winning is winning. And because I've done so much of that, I know what it takes. Being as old and out of touch as you are, are you worried? As I just said two seconds <laughs> ago, I'm not that far removed. Are you worried about being able to relate to the younger generation no, of kids? look at me. Look at me. I could still be one of them kids, bro. What are Ooh, you talking about? Look at more. me. I'm a handsome young fellow. I I feel good. I can still get out there and bust their ass. That's the main thing, too, because it's like I'm sitting there. I'm telling you to do something. You're going back and forth with me because you think my way is not right. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go get my sneakers out of the car. I'm going to come show you that my way is right. Right. Like I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you the ball. I'm going to tell you to prove it to me that what you're saying works. And then I'm going to show you that what I'm saying works. And that's going to. I think that is a little advantage of mine that I'm going to have that other coaches don't have because they can't still play. Who, growing up through your basketball careers with all your coaches that you've been able to play for, who do you think inspired you or related to you the best? Because, I mean, you have a, ride, a wide wow. variety. I mean, like Larry Brown was probably close to 80 when you played for him. <laughs> fucking 78. 78, bro. yeah. So then you got Jason Kidd. I don't even what? know how he was still doing right? it. Right? And then you had Jason Kidd was probably, what, early 40s? Yeah, he was a player. I played against him my rookie year. The second, my second year in the NBA, he was coaching me. So, I mean, you've had a pretty wide range of ages, skill level, different. <laughs> who do you think related to you the best? I, that's just such a tough question to, to answer because I've had so many good coaches and I've and I've had them at different times in my life. So I'll give you an example of why each one of them had such an impact on me. I think Coach Hurley's impact on me was so powerful because of the time he got me in my life. You know, being a young kid from the inner cities, not having a father figure, he was the first person that I had that held me accountable, that made me feel like if I don't do the right things, Everything that I love and want to do with my life is not going to happen. So he was the first person to put that pressure on me to say, you know what, you got to be a better person than what your environment says you are, go are going to be, what the numbers say you're going to be. Like, you're better than that. And so he pushed me to want to show myself that almost. Um, and I think trampolining off that, Coach Self caught me in a, in a similar transition, like, now I'm a little bit older, so I know a little bit more about myself. I'm finding myself. But Coach Self was so – he was so powerful at, again, getting six guys from the inner city to come join the team that just won a national championship and somehow buy into ain't none of us as good as the player that was here before us or as good as players that play here before. So how are we going to somehow – how are we going to how are we gonna make our mark? Keep winning. Like, keep the tradition going. Don't fuck it up type of thing. So, like – he 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 made us buy into that and for him to be able to uh you know have that type of 
I guess mind control over six young kids is like crazy to think that like I would literally run through a wall for this guy because I because on the other side of it there's 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 something good right and so like and then Jason Kidd just helped me become a way better basketball player like like I was a good basketball player leaving high school coming to college when I got to college I became a better basketball player because I played more basketball the NBA my job was to play basketball I got paid to play so even when I wasn't in the games all I did was work out individually with the trainer watch tape with him um Avery Johnson the same I would come in on Saturdays me and another rookie and we play one-on-one for two hours because we're not playing in real games so that was our game so I got better I I I I understood the game of basketball more because I had coaches actually sitting down breaking plays down by play. Not not how this play is going to help the team get better. How is this play going to make you a five to six, seven year pro? Like how is doing this the right way going to make you successful within this league? And so um, I got to see the game in a different way that I never seen it before because I was sitting down with guys who played. Avery Johnson won a championship in the NBA on a great team. Jason Kidd won a championship on NBA. On Did the those guys team. get out and practice with you guys? No, 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 never. J- uh, Avery was old. Jason was just over basketball at that time. Like he was, those last two or three years in the league, he I feel like he forced it a little bit. Like was in the right situation, got a lot of money, played for a coach that loved him and he loved. So it was kind of like a free, right. free year, a couple free years. I mean, he played good, but he just he didn't he didn't he didn't want to play anymore. Who gave the best ass chewing as a coach? Coach Hurley, by far. Right. Yeah. By far, Coach Hurley, because again, as a 16 year old kid, you don't know how to take this. Is he fucking just a mean asshole? <laughs> or is there something positive about the message? Because I can't see it right now. Was it a curse, curse word field? Come on, man. This guy, like a sailor. Like, a, it's like a sailor, bro. But again, as a 16 year old kid, you hear these, you hear these words all the time my right. mom was a sailor too so i hear these <laughs> words all the time but again the me- it's like what's coming what's what's behind the message though like what, i know he ain't he can't just be that pissed at me <laughs> right like it has to be something behind it and i didn't understand it by the time i got the coach self i could understand the message even though I, I forced like i i forced his hand a lot i understood why he would react in certain ways he would with me which with coach hurley i couldn't see it yet so probably Coach Hurley just because I couldn't understand it. I had a lot of ass chewing from Coach Self, though. Like, probably I probably had the most from Coach Self. Coach Hurley didn't have to discipline me that much because I wouldn't back and forth with him. He said some shit. I, I, most of the time, I it was the time done. You, got the KU, you were feeling yourself a I just bit, felt huh? like I was a grown man. Like, yeah. I was older. Like, I, I got more freedom. So he's the only person telling me what I can and cannot do. So it's like, wow. What the fuck? <laughs> Nobody else came. My mom ain't even at this point in my life. Why? But you know, and that was just me just just being defined as being a, a male, an 18 year old male, spreading my wings a little bit, smelling myself for the first time in my life, feeling independent and having some type of freedom and trying to take full advantage of that. What's the funniest thing a coach has ever said to you out of maybe like when he's cut, like chewing your ass out? Did coach he ever- Joe Dooley. Did he ever no. say anything to you like mm-hmm. that you just coach Self isn't a comedian i don't think he's i don't think shit he says is funny i love you coach but I, he's not he's not trying to be I'm funny a, in this what, message. what i mean by like if he's yelling at you and he just says something so random or somebody called you a name and you just start laughing like man what the yeah. what you just say coach self slips up and say <laughs> say shit all the time and i just like bro what <laughs> but coach dooley told me one time in the middle of like trying to explain something to me that I wasn't trying to listen to. I was like, you know what? You know, fucking listen, I'll take you in the parking lot right now. Fuck you up. <laughs> like, we're at half court. And now Dooley Running is an assistant, He right? was an assistant. One of my favorite, my favorite assistant. The one that recruited me the most. He's an East Coast guy. Um, was a hell of a player in his day. I'm pretty sure he went to Providence, I think. I think so. They used to call him Jumping Joe Dooley. He was super athletic. Um, even when he was coaching at 50 years old, would fucking run 10 miles in it every morning, like super in shape always high energy and would like you legit be on my ass all the time like even more than coach self would be on me and one day at practice i just was like not trying to hear it coach self was on me and usually when coach self was on me he would be the one kind of being like yo you're good like, don't worry about it that day he was like he was doubling down <laughs> and i was like bro shut the fuck up like shut up he's like you don't fucking listen so i can't ever coach you i should have taken you out in the parking lot and kick your ass <laughs> 
If we ever get, I think, I'm pretty sure Sharon was there. If we ever get Sharon up here, you gotta, we gotta talk to him. He's like, I'll take you in the parking lot, I kick your ass right now. And I turn, I turned around so fast and dropped the basketball. Like, I dare you, let's go. Like, I've been waiting for one of y'all to say this to me. <laughs> he was like, I would kick your ass. I'm so frustrated right now. And he just started laughing. Like, look, look, Sharon, look, I got him mad. You think he's gonna make the play right this time? He's sure he does it right this time. Like. I'm like, bro, this, this is not the way to get to me, bro. This fucking... Now, be honest, man. If you guys went outside, dude, we probably whoop your ass, huh? Come on, man. This is one thing for sure. And a lot of people can vouch. My hands work, and they work well. And and there's people out here that can vouch for that. I think you posted them busted up old Instagram videos of you punching that bag up. You see the bag dented. The tip is falling over and everything. But that's, that's just like professional boxing. I'm trying to get, you know, trying to make sure my shit is sharp. I'm talking about if we go... In the in the bathroom right now and lock the door. I'm coming out. That I'm, just got weird real fast. Coming, <laughs> that just got weird closet, real fast. bathroom. We can shut the door in here, wherever you want to take it. A small room. I'm coming out, bro. That's just you know I'm I, you know where I'm from. You you gave the bio at the beginning. You know where I'm from. We don't don't, don't mess play, around. We don't play like that. We don't play like that, baby. Real see, tough that, see, this is the stuff that's going to get you fired a weekend. Going to have protesters out front. Going to get the podcast canceled. Nah, they're going to be Because they're going to be upset because you done t- offered to take one of their kids into the small closet, lock the door, and see who comes out. Hey, that's what it takes to motivate, man. Let's go in the closet, bro. That's all I'm saying. The dog going to come out, bro. The dog is going to come out. You put me in the jungle, I'm coming out with minks on. A mink hat. A chinchilla headband, <laughs> snakeskin draws. I don't even know how to transition to another conversation. Like a Mike Tyson that. rant, I just went yeah, on right I now. Know. I don't even know how to transition, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. <laughs> I just went on a Mike how, Tyson uh, rant just now. Don't question my. So what? Now. What are you walking into at Free State? How was the team last year? Uh, the team was pretty good last year. I think the biggest thing that we're facing is we lost a bunch of seniors. So we got a couple of really good ones coming back, but the little that I seen at the beginning of the summer when we were doing uh, the free state like basketball camp, I got to go up there a little bit and see. Um, it looks like the older guys are definitely going to lead us. We got one or two guys that can play at the next level, college level, um, that are seniors. We got a couple of really good juniors, but it looked like the most complete and full class was the sophomores, which I'm excited about because we've got something to build with. Um, I think we got one or two sophomores that probably will play varsity, definitely will control the JV minutes. Um, but again, like I said, something to build off of Sharon being a new head coach, um, getting a lot of the kids who played for the last coach, him getting the sophomores that will end up being seniors in a couple of years. I think that that's where he's going to make uh, the most of, of his impact. And we're going to be able to show what type of coaches we really are, because I think um, they're going to be coached by us and the other guys were coached by the other coach and we're kind of kind of taking over filling in and just kind of you know now you know Sharon pretty well from playing with him what kind of coach what's his style going to be is he going to be bust the clipboard over his knee or yeah. is he going to be the are you going to have to be the one to like come on settle yeah, down yeah i think i think Sharon i think Sharon is going to be a, a a good amount of all of all of that like Sharon has been well coached himself his high school coach was was a hell of a coach coach self um coached the shit out of him and then um, you know, he was coached by Larry Brown in, in a short professional stint. Um, so his knowledge and understanding behind the game is 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 in the second to none as well. Um, and then just with his his experience of playing, um, I think his style of play is aggressive. He's a dog. He's a pit bull. Like he's gonna he's a get after you kind of player. And I think he is going to push his players to have that dog. Now, what I've learned is you can't teach dog. Right. You can teach skills. You can't teach dog people your dog or you're not um so i think because of that i think he'll blow a gasket a little bit here and there trying to teach um he's a chicago kid inner city kid i'm a new jersey inner city kid and then we, we're in lawrence kansas coaching kids that are not inner city kids and that's not no offense to them that's actually a good thing right um but it's just a different environment different yeah. it's different and so um i think we're gonna have to uh find a good good medium a way to push them but not push them to the point where we um push them away right i think um 
Kosov was great at finding something about a certain player that he knew would drive them. So me, he had to push me and yell at me and scream at me. Other players he had to coddle and talk to and to get the best out of them because they would shut down if you yelled at them. And I think it's going to take us a while, but I think me and Sharon are going to have to find that out about our players, find our personnel, find out who who we could talk to certain ways and who we can coach certain ways to get the best out of them because that's the objective. You touched on it a little bit earlier with Dooley when you said, you know, there'd be days that coach would be on your ass and Dooley would come up and do the, that kind of like, is that how it worked at the University of Kansas? Like if one coach was on your ass, there's always somebody behind him playing the good cop kind of like, man, don't. don't I think, I think, I think all good coaching staffs have a good balance of that. You need a coach that you could just go talk to and just blow steam off. Um, and then there's always going to be the head coach. And he's probably the one that is the father figure. So the one that, if you do some shit off the court, you're disappointed by. You go through one or two other coaches before you talk to him to see if, to what you may be getting into. Like, so it, it, you always have to have that. I think every, I think you have coaches like that, but every player has a coach specifically for like Coach Dooley was my guy. Sharon would probably tell you Coach T was his guy. Uh, the twins would probably tell you Coach Manning was their guy that they could do that with. So I think we all have a person, and then we all see Coach Self as the guy, right? Like, we can talk to him about certain shit because he is the guy. He's controlling the minutes. He's controlling, like, he, like I ain't going to go tell him that I just got in a fight with my girlfriend and ran the red light and got a ticket. Like, he ain't the one I'm going to tell that to. I'm going to tell that to Coach Dooley and let Coach Dooley tell him. And then when Coach Self called me, I'm already knowing, like, okay, cool, the ice has been broken. Whatever he says to me now, he knows what happened. And that's kind of how that goes. How bad did it? How bad did it have to be before it got to Coach Self? Like on the scale of getting in trouble, it had to like, be pretty. It bad. had to be pretty bad. Yeah, it had to so be pretty like, bad. if you just did something minor, the assistants would take care of it. Yeah, and you had it had to be pretty, pretty bad because he just dealing with so much. There's 15 of us at a time, so if he's getting every call about every single thing an 18 year old, 19 year old kid's doing in college, he would never get any work done. And we don't have to go into specifics just yet. We're going to tease it a little bit longer. But was there ever a time where, like, if you got in trouble, something minor, it didn't get to coach self, did they make you, did, like, what was the punishment? Like, did they just yell you at you? You know who Andrea Hootie is? Yeah, Coach Hootie. Oh, yeah. Strength and conditioning coach. That's the punishment. You just had to go see Hootie? Whatever she got for you is going to fucking hurt. <laughs> Whatever she got for you, you're not so going to like. Just, like, walk you in there and then tell Coach Hootie, uh, like. You got uh, 6 a.m. with Hootie. And she that means she has to be up at 6 a.m. too in the weight is, room. So she's pissed. Means she ain't, uh, <laughs> she pissed. So, you got in trouble. So now I got to get up at 6 to be in here to 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 punish you? I'm going to really punish you. And so I would so do all type of. did ever walk by in the morning and then look over and be like. He would sometimes be in the there working out. What the hell did you do? Nah, he was sometime being there working out, though, like doing his own workout and shit and would see us in there and just knew we did something. <laughs> just didn't want to. He don't just care, like... bro. If it didn't get to him, it ain't that bad. <laughs> right, okay. Do what you got to do and move on. That's just his whole thing. Like, don't make it worse type of thing. Like, don't dwell on it. Don't make it worse. Um, You fucked up. You got a punishment and you deal with it and you move on. That's life. All right, man. It's time for some random questions to get to know Tyshawn a little bit better. What you last, got for me? Last movie or TV show that made you tear up a little bit? Damn. I don't be getting too... No, don't no, give me that. I'm don't not going to front. I don't Come be on, getting man. too emotional about movies, bro. And on, even man. movies that I think I get emotional about or something that may trigger me, I don't watch it. Like, I skipped the movie that I really wanted to watch because I knew it would trigger my emotions. It was this Kevin Hart movie that he had about on Netflix the, with his daughter. daughter about being a dad. Yeah, yeah, like, I, I, I never watched it because I it knew. Got me it, I knew and I did not. I would not. I, I still movie. haven't watched it's it. It's a good movie. Because I just knew that it would, like, trigger something in me that would be like, oh, damn. Not it's even just, up. like, not even just Couldn't watching it. it at home by Couldn't yourself. No, I didn't Nobody around. Like, nobody you even know. That's, that's the worst like if i'm with somebody else i'm definitely not gonna cry <laughs> or get emotional what's when i'm with myself that don't happen home, i'll be nobody sitting there ever my know, own man. nobody would ever know you can sit there by yourself and nobody would ever know i don't know i don't even want to think about it but that one and then i seen king richard which is another good i haven't type seen movie. that one yet that's uh the serena and venus yeah, it didn't make me tear up but yeah. it was like damn that was a good like i felt that like being a dad having a daughter like just things like that like i felt that you know so like um so I would say King Richard, I guess. 
Okay. King Richard. Have you watched the Manti Teo documentary? No, I, I get. I got to text last night, and as I'm reading your text, I'm looking on someone's Instagram. They're like, "This is the craziest story that I've seen in a long yes, time." Yes, man. I, I mean, obviously, I remember it happened in ten years ago, but I don't remember the details of it, and I don't think I really got into the weeds with it. And then last night, watching that, man, it's crazy. Yeah, that Untold on Netflix is fire. I like that. Yeah. They got some good stories on there. They got a. They showed a preview at the end of the Manti Teo one for one that you're gonna like. It's about the referee uh, Donahue, Donahue, about his gambling. Uh... Yeah, we used to eat at his. Um... So funny story is that we were playing this uh, tournament in high school in Massachusetts all the time, and on our way to Massachusetts, we would. He had a, a restaurant in Connecticut, I'm pretty sure, and we would stop there as a team. Coach Hurley was really good friends with him or his dad or his brother or some shit, and we would stop at his restaurant on the way there and eat for free all the time. And he was the one that got caught uh, gambling. gambling, point shaving, wasn't he? Yeah. That don't surprise me, bro. These, you a gambling man. Allegedly. Allegedly. These people do crazy shit, man. We talking about that untold. They they talked about the guy from Arizona State on, on one of those, yeah, the Headache the Smith, day. and how he was. Did anybody ever approach you, high school, college pros? And Bro, say, hey man, I need you to do this. Nah, never, I mean, never that honest, black I'll and white. I'll be honest with you. If I knew you now when you were playing, or if you're still playing, be, oh yeah, it'd become, a, it'd be one of our conversations. Yeah, but it, shit, now they got the nil. You wouldn't even have to. You just have to give me a shirt and tell me to wear it on my Instagram, and you could give me money. But with that being said, uh, no, and it was never like, yo, I need you to tell me some information. Like, it could have happened, and me not knowing just because. <laughs> Cause it could be like over a genuine conversation. Right. Like how was practice yesterday? Or like right. who did this? Or like, you guys ready for tonight? Really yeah. Are you this? guys ready for tonight? Yeah. Or like, what, what was... or a guy like trying to buy you beers all night at the fucking bar, you know, and you got a game the next morning or the, or the next afternoon or some shit, you know, like, um, so it could be as simple as that. So no, it wasn't like somebody came to me and was like, yo, you, I need you to do this, but just random asking me questions. And I'm just like, <laughs> why the fuck you want to know that? And this is before I'm even thinking like, I gamble a little bit now. You do? I like to play with. I, I like the. I, I like baseball. I like hockey. I won a lot of a lot of money on the Lightning last year and the, and the Rockies. I mean, uh, Avalanche. Um, but with that being said, I I would have never. I, I could never pay attention to it as a player, bro. Like, cause you know, I find it hard to believe that players can because you know, just being so competitive, I would in no way, in shape or form, even think about trying to lose a game or trying to cover a spread and just just gambling myself now knowing how hard that is for spreads to even like i would never even think about that i, I would never even tell somebody that i had control over that because it's so hard right. to do even as a four-year starter playing 30 minutes a game i couldn't control a spread or no shit like that like that would be extremely hard it would take too much effort and my mental my mental would not allow me to i would go crazy like i would legit like tell on myself or something like i would go crazy which segues way into uh, before the football season, we're going to have a little sports segment, right? Yeah, absolutely. Sports gambling, since it is now going to be legal in the state of Kansas. So we're going to see how good your picks really are. You know. <laughs> kind of quiet over there now. I mean, it's a game. We're gambling. It's like, it's not who's, your, who's your team? Growing up uh, East Coast, are you a Jets guy New for York, football? New York football giants. Oof. They ain't been good for a while. The Bronx Bombers, you know, the navy blue look good with everything. That pinstripe, come on, man, can't beat it. The Giants have not been good for a while, but with this being said, we do have two Super Bowls in the last fucking decade. Only because of Eli Manning. Bro. The GOAT. I love Eli. He he a GOAT. You know why? Why? How many losses does Tom Brady have in the Super Bowl? Two? More than two, doesn't it? It's three now, three. I think, because I think he just lost one in the last couple of years. Yeah. He just lost one, right? Didn't he just lose one? Yeah. A couple years ago? Yeah. Well, two out of those three came from who? Eli. Man. Okay. And who else? The New York football giants? Okay. And that was in 08 in 2012, my freshman year of college and my senior year of college. Okay. So I'm in Kansas repping giants hard, just so you know. I was in school repping, repping the east side hard. Okay? Yeah. Let's talk about it. Did you go to any KU football games when you were in school? Very few. Very, very, very few. I went to a few tail, tailgates. I, I seen, I got, I, I seen Sam Bradford play when he was at Oklahoma. Oklahoma. He came here. Um, Texas Tech came here one year, and he had a uh, Crabtree. Okay. Seen him. Seen him. Um, 
Very few. I got to see Ty Riesland and Desmond Briscoe connect a couple times, which is dope. I really like Chris Harris, one of my favorite people that I went to school with as a, you know, that wasn't my teammates. Um, good dude. Uh, Bradley McDougal, who plays McDougal, for the Seahawks, yeah. played for the Raiders a little bit. One of my one of my guys, we came into school together. Damon Patterson came into school with him. We had a bunch of classes together, and he ended up having a really good career here. Um, I know he's doing some youth football training in Dallas right now. Um, so when I was in school, we actually didn't hang out with the football players that much. But um, like I said, having classes with them and then just over the years after school, just seeing um, the progression of some of the guys and, and their lives and stuff, uh, you know. Yeah. All right, man. That's all we got for the show today. You got anything to wrap it up with? Nah, great episode. Those are some great questions you had. We'll keep building off that and giving the people what they want, baby. Stay tuned. Follow us on social media. Like us, subscribe, uh, pay attention because we're going to be dropping some news coming up about uh, we're going to try to do a live episode for episode number three. So the people can tap in with us. So, yeah, we'll be able to have it set up. We got a man behind the mic or behind the shield here, Mike bazooka mike our producer he's going to get us going with a live episode you'll be able to uh join us on instagram uh ask questions comments we are going to have a guest we haven't uh finalized the date and time yet so we'll get that out as soon as we get it but it probably will be a former player of yours is that right yeah so we'll be able few, to validate all these dying to come talk shit to me so all these stories you've been telling us we'll be able to get somebody on here to let us know if they're true or not and validate and probably give us a few stories that we can uh no, damn well i ain't no headline <laughs> we can get a few stories to talk about embarrass you a little bit so that'll be on episode number three it's going to be live so follow us on instagram facebook like our youtube channel that's all we got for episode number two see you next time